I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. <laughs> Welcome to the Button Mappers. I'm Alex. Okay, hey, well, Alex. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Can I can okay. I just say we, we okay, chose okay. you guys chose to introduce the podcast with the intro that's already playing before we speak. <laughs> When, uh, okay, you said you guys. What do you mean you guys? Didn't both of you just sing that song? Yeah, oh yeah, you did do the song. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was like a race thing. But... <laughs> Sounded like a banjo to me. So, Whoa, yeah. who is that? Yeah, who is that? Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> is that is that Terry? Is that what you actually sound like, Terry? Yes, this is what I sound like. <laughs> <laughs> We, we got talk Terry, Terry edition. I think that's the best way to get Terry on this show is we'll just make him up. <laughs> yeah, we, dude, we should hire a dude off of like Fiverr or something. Yeah. To come onto the show. <laughs> Look, I didn't come on the show. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> when I would like say is. things that Terry would never say, like, oh, yeah. I'm so excited for the new mm-hmm. PlayStation 5. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to pay $70 for games. <laughs> I bought me an Xbox. <laughs> my, game, game Pass. my game this month is actually DLC. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I'll be speaking about a MOBA. <laughs> Best genre. We should probably introduce our guest. We have oh, yeah. gentlemen, Axel. Axel, Wolf. Axel what's Wolf. up, man? Hey, what's up, button mappers? How's it going? Welcome to good the show. Evening. I'm good. Chilling. <laughs> Had the perfect intro, but Spencer was adamant about dissing us. So. <laughs> yeah, we start we start up the show, and then Spencer is like, "I'm just gonna fucking just, rail these guys." You started the show <laughs> twice because <laughs> they're gonna hear we'll that. Start the, I'm Alex, <laughs> and it's I'm gonna be like, "There we go. That's that's an intro right there." Um, <laughs> but since we didn't use that one, I was gonna be like, "Well, you know." <laughs> Hi, Alex. Not to be confused with Axel. Whoa. Be like, Whoa I'm Axel. Axel. I used <laughs> to start my stuff with, like, Axel here, and then I realized that Alex does that on his videos. I was like, uh, can't do that then. This sounds way too similar. I thought I said, hey, geeks and gamers. It's me. Hey, germs and sperms. Oh, <laughs> germs and, oh that's a good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure the it's listeners are, are riveted that we started this podcast five times now <laughs> that's it, it seems like every one it just kind of gets sloppier and sloppier so it's good just go with it germs and sperms all the way baby germs and sperms, germs and sperms. can we officially change to germs and sperms i, I vote for that well yeah maps and mittens <laughs> yeah i like just that one only. You know, germs and sperms. anyway i'm alex oh my god <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you got it, dude. Welcome to Game Talk. This is Game Talk for not just uh, any month, but which month? September. September. No, it's, well, we're, we're recording this in September, but it's, it's October. Oh, yeah. We'll it's a Metroidvania right month. That's my uh, Castlevania theme. Oh, that's Castlevania? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For the listeners who don't know, <laughs> that's yeah. Castlevania. I don't remember that uh, song in Castlevania. Which which game was that from? One where he was in front of Dracula. Oh. That was a 64 game, wasn't it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was a 64 game. <laughs> it's from the Metro- game Rhythm of Empathy or something. Rhythm of em- that sounds like a yeah. like, <laughs> the rhythm like, of empathy. Whatever their naming Castlevania is, they just have a dart and they throw it at a like a board of synonyms and just just try to figure out what the name will be. It's that it's the Family Guy episode of South Park with the dolphins where they like randomly pick the <laughs> the combination of words. Yeah, many of elephants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
welcome for Metroid Month, Axel. I'm very excited to have you on and hear uh, the game that you talked about. But before we do have you and us talk about our Metroidvania-themed games, we are going to do some Metroidvania-themed questions. Rock and roll. by. <laughs> so it's your, your cat's walking by. This is the part where you curse it out. Oh, well, this is where you throw the monitor at Get the fuck it. out of here, cat! <laughs> I would never swear at somebody, okay? Let's just make that okay. clear. I would never yell at somebody. Look, she's gone. She she got my, my keys. <laughs> well, you know, somebody once told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. Um, so Q&A, yeah. Q&A is a segment in our Game Talks where we invite you, the viewer and listener, to leave questions on our YouTube Game Talk videos. Uh, just follow the maze, you know, you'll, you'll get there eventually. Um, and we answer them on subsequent game talks. Where else can the viewers get in touch with us, Alex? Um, via Carrier Pigeon. Um, you, you can also put a letter in a bottle and send it out to, to see. We'll, we'll find it. Did it'll, you guys it, get mine? It'll, it'll wash up. Yeah, it washed up yesterday. Awesome. Um, oh, uh, also, uh, we are on Discord, and if you want to listen to more of our podcast, we are on Apple Spot, uh, Apple, Spotify, and Spod, Applecast. Spot Bucket. Spod I didn't realize bucket. Spotify and Apple, bon Apple just like, I didn't, I didn't realize that Apple either. Used something I was trying out. to save time and just do them all in one. Apple Spodcast. <laughs> Whoa. They'll hear whichever Apple one they know. <laughs> Join us on AppleTube. <laughs> and uh, make sure that if you're listening to us on YouTube, which you likely are, that you whip that subscribe button, you grapple beam the like button, and you leave us a kind comment. Oh. With some questions on this video, because it's a... Uh, yeah. Talk. You you proud of yourself, Spencer? Yes. And uh, ne the theme for next month is no theme November. <laughs> so make sure your questions yeah. are related to no themes. Nothing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely nothing. not. <laughs> Daily video <laughs> games, okay? <laughs> it's nothing November. <laughs> One thing, not even once. <laughs> you don't realize we we went all of September without bringing up Ass Timber. I'm sad. I've never heard of Ass Timber. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> We're gonna do a leisure suit Larry map out. Didn't didn't come to fruition. <laughs> All ass timber. <laughs> no, no, that was for Fucktober. Oh, I know that one. Yeah. Okay. We'll have you back. That's the only holiday I celebrate. <laughs> 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 oh. All Fucktober. <laughs> We've got quite the game talk lined up for you today, listeners. So it's gonna be a fest uh so <laughs> uh be sure to check out axel you don't do regular uploads right um no uh, my youtube channel has kind of been floating for a while i think the last video i did was returnal that came out like three months ago so mm. but yeah it's friendly fire gaming you'll find it on youtube it's the picture with the switch and two people in between because when you search it, there's a couple other ones, but they're not very active either. So we're like, oh, we can use that name. I'm going to trademark it, right? Yep. Is that how that works? Not if I do it first. <laughs> <laughs> going to beat me to it. I'm going to trademark <laughs> button mappers. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Boy. <laughs> Those them's fighting words. It's all right. Fighting I share words. a name with, like, some car channels called TurboZone. <laughs> so it's like, if you look TurboZone, it's like... Me and a bunch of car channels. <laughs> they probably look it up and they, they see yours and they're like, what a disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything about cars. <laughs> they nerds. I, sh I should do car month. <laughs> My favorite was Bill's house. Who? <laughs> we, we bulldozed his house. Yeah. There's Bill a Bill's bulldozed. house out there. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was already a Bill's house. We we made Bill's house. I, for, I forgot about that. <laughs> if only we could have recorded us dis discussing Bill's house. No, no. Imagine. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, moving away from Bill, his house. Uh, we're gonna go oh. to the questions. VG Mashup, aka the Question Master, 
has two questions for us. Uh, Woo! I cannot believe that I didn't leave a question thus from last time. Well, you get two. Uh, Q1, do you prefer a scary movie or a scary game? Do you recommend one of each for this Halloween? Ooh, Axel, perfect. since you are the guest, why don't we start with you? Which do you prefer? Um, so it depends on the game. If it's like Resident Evil or Silent Hill, if it's a style game, I would probably rather play the game. But if it's like Outlast or Fatal Frame or something like that, I might pick a movie. Um, if I recommended anything for him, I'd do um, The Evil Within 1 and 2. Those are really good. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Alex? I'm a big horror fan, so this is tough for me. Um, I do really enjoy horror games. Uh, either of the, you know, of course I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, but I also enjoy like some of the the more narrative focused horror games and stuff, uh, or the you know more more simple horror games. Um, I would go with a horror game. I do like horror movies, um, but I think the games have more interactivity, and when they're done well, they're done really well. A horror movie. I like it. I kind of just watch it one time, and then I just kind of shelve it. Unless it's like Evil Dead, then I watch it a hundred times. But um, so I'd probably go with a horror game. And if I had to recommend one for this Halloween, uh, I'm trying to pick something that I've played recently. Um, I was playing The Medium, and I thought that was really interesting. Uh, it's by Blooper Team, and they're now working with Konami. We don't know on what, but it could be Silent Hill. Um, I've been playing that on my Series S, so I would, I would I would recommend the medium. It's on Game Pass. Cool. Uh, I would pick movies. Uh, I'm not a big horror guy, so my answers are limited. But I guess uh, the thing, John Carpenter's. Ooh, that's mm. a good one. Yeah, I was. I was, I was good. Sorry, I, I was going to say to that. I was going to mention. Um, Alien, but we're that's yeah. If I had three, stay, would, tuned, it, stay tuned to a certain episode of Dojo coming out this month. <laughs> <laughs> if I had, if I had another one, it would be that or uh, The Shining. Yeah, okay. I'm not much into the horror genre, but when you say scary, I if I defer to one, it's going to be like a psychological horror. Um, in that case, I would probably go movies, and I like some of the classics. Um, you know, obviously, like, you know, the, the new ones, like, I like the new It. I haven't even read the, the Stephen King book, but um, I did enjoy that. Um, the Shining. Oh, this kind of classic horror. Um, there's one that's like, it's called The Birds or something. Oh, Hitchcock? Who does that. Yeah, Hitchcock. Yeah, oh, I do yeah, love Hitchcock. a good Hitchcock film, so. Either um, you guys see the uh, the new Shining um, movie that came out, like, last year or year before. Oh, the, I think I missed it. Did the, you? the Doctor one, the... No, yeah, I didn't yeah. see it. Doctor Sleep, whatever. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Yeah, it was all right. Good. Yeah. Did you know that in the original um, it, the the book, not the like the original movie, um, there is a teenage orgy. I missed that part. I knew that. Yeah, just wanted to share that. Make us more comfortable. All right, next question. Did <laughs> you mash up with Q two? What is one of your favorite anime series that still doesn't have a game? You can be specific, like, for example, Batman has many games, but Batman Beyond doesn't. I'll be real Ooh. quick, because I don't watch anime, so none. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. Is he talking about anime, or just, like, animated There's series? Batman. Animated series are the words oh, no. used, but just go with whatever, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard because, like, a lot of series already have games. I mean, whether or not they're good or not is another topic. Uh, give me, like, an Archer game in the style of, like, Hitman or something. Or Rick and Morty RPG, like, the South Park games. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Every, it's like every property in the 90s got, like, a Game Boy Color game, I swear to God. <laughs> or, right? or, so or, or, like, a Game Boy Advance game. It's like everything has one, dude. <laughs> Dude, so ridiculous. Dude, um, man, that, made, that made shopping for a kid's birthday the easiest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. Well, he likes Tech Deck, dude. So I'll get him this <laughs> Game Boy Color Tech Deck dude game. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick with anime. And uh, I feel like I'm right here, but I could be wrong. BioPhoenix, correct me. I don't think um, Trigun ever got a game. And that's like one of my favorite animes. So I don't think so. I'll go with Trigun. 
Oh, if we're really doing fun. animes, I'd do like a Goblin Slayer RPG or something. It'd be pretty cool. Hmm. Or I like, that. um, did you play DBZ Fighters? Like, I wouldn't. Yeah. Mind. A bunch of I games mean, would do that. That game is sick. <laughs> where, where, Alex? I have some bad news. Trigun, There's a Trigun game. Trigun has a game on the Xbox 360 called Trigun: oh. The Planet Gunsmoke. Damn it! I've made by Sega. How did you miss it? What? <laughs> Sega. <laughs> Because it's an anime game, and I don't play a lot of anime games. Um, oh. Fuck. Um, then, whatever, I'll see uh, uh, Heath, Heathcliff. There we go. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, I will kind of cheat my answer here, because I like the book. I've never seen the animated film, but uh, Tales from Earthsea is the animated film. It's a Studio Ghibli film, but... Um, Really classic uh, sci-fi literature series by Ursula Le Guin. So Ursula? There you go. Wah, wah, Alex, unfortunately, Heathcliff has Heathcliff, damn it! It's called Heathcliff the Fast and the Furriest. <laughs> it's on the Wii. Look, fine, then. I want a game about Grimace. Not Ronald McDonald, because I know that exists. Just the fucking Grimace. <laughs> He's a character. <laughs> Ezra is determined to prove Alex right. <laughs> okay, I think you're off spectrum, the hook. There was the grimmest great journey. <laughs> I think you're off the hook on that one. Yeah, okay, good. Grimace well, I only thought of Grimace because I have I have a Grimace piggy bank like right over here. So I was like, this was the nearest thing I can reference. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so after this, meet, meet Link up to play Hello Kitty Cruisers. <laughs> RPG Archive, oh, uh, yeah. what's, what separates a Metroidvania from a platformer? Mm. Isn't it a platformer, though? Well, why would you call it a Metroidvania and not a platformer? Oh, well, I don't know. it just has those, like, the open exploration elements, right, where you collect... It's like you have to get certain things to progress throughout the map. It's 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 not like a level progression. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Does that make it a Metroid game? Metroidvania. I mean, it's they combined it because Castlevanias are started just doing that, and Metroids stopped doing that. Wouldn't that make it a Zelda game? No. Wouldn't that make it Call of Duty? It's a, it's a side scroller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the other rule, obviously, get through the map. <laughs> well, you said side scroller attached. Yeah, to side scroller. Wouldn't I make it a Clue Clue Land? You guys like the term Metroidvania? Yeah, whatever. Sure. I'm cool with it because I don't really know much about Castlevania, so I just... And I know the games that I played of it originally were like that. So I don't go back too far in the history. Because I know it started as like just a more general side-scroller action game. I think they earned it because Symphony of the Night is fucking great. So Yeah, that's the best one. <laughs> or my favorite one. Mm. You don't think it's sort of a mm, well? I guess I understand that like Symphony of the Night is like kind of the masterpiece of the Castlevania series. Um, is it fair to categorize something as a Vania simply on the RPG system that was introduced from that era? I don't think it's based on the RPG system. I think it's based more on kind of like what Alex was saying: the open map. That's not there's no levels. It's just like a big open map. Yeah, you can backtrack and stuff like that. I, and I, it, 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 it feels weird that we've kept this name for so long because now a lot of games are going this route, which is cool. I'm, you know, I'm cool with that. You know, I can name, you know, Axiom, Ori, Hollow Knight. You know, there's a bunch of them on, you know, that are like indie games that are doing this thing. But like, yeah. it's just funny, you know, because you think back of like third person, you know, sorry, uh, first person shooters, and it was like they were once just known as Doom clones. And now they're first-person shooters, so it's 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 weird that we have, that that we haven't moved past Metroidvania, but I get why that's the name. Hmm. I I guess it it I don't know if it bothers me per se, but I understand that Castlevania is more than the systems in Symphony of the Night and the DS titles and the GBA titles. Um, I think that kind of erases some of the the legacy and the history of the. The S trilogy, the Super Nintendo game, the Turbo Graphics game, and the Genesis game. Yeah. 
Whatever. <laughs> it's, an, it's an official genre on Wikipedia. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, it is whatever. It's in, the, it's in the popular nomenclature. I just don't like using it. And the other thing is, you know, like, I think there is kind of a distinction. Like, mentioned, um, I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about it. But uh, you know, I think there. Are, if if you call something like metroidvania but it's more in line with like what original metroid was then you're kind of mixing terms up a little bit i would assume that they picked metroidvania because they liked what castlevania symphony of the night did with like rpg character progression that maybe metroid didn't handle and so they wanted to unite those concepts i would guess but i mean i wasn't it's not like when I was at that age, I was paying that much attention, so I couldn't really tell you if that's exactly the case. Well, that's what Castlevania became for, well, I guess it's, it still is, and they don't do anything with it, but, uh, you know, that's what the, you know, it was for a while. It just went to that style throughout the GBA and DS and stuff, um, and you would even argue still, because, like, that, that Bloodstained, the, not, like, the spinoff, which I actually like better, but the, um, yeah. the main Bloodstained games... Uh, you know, game that's straight up like a Metroidvania game. Um, like I said, I do. I actually do enjoy the older style Castlevania more. Uh, that's just my old school taste coming through. But um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm fine with it. I I, I think I, I think um, at a point maybe they were doing more with it than Metroid was. <laughs> so um, yeah, pretty comparable in terms of yeah. like quantity of games, but. We can uh, we can move on. Did Axel, did Axel answer? Uh, yeah, I don't have a freaking okay. answer for this. It's like, well, I mean, they all have like <laughs> RPG elements and backtracking, and, like maybe an emphasis on combat, but like the abilities to like uh, to progress in the game, but like platformers do that shit too. So they all have sexy main characters. Simon. All of them. <laughs> yeah, that Simon gets me every time. Hey. Join us next time for Simon. Uh, board game. Says. Simon for the win. Turbo zone. Turbo. Turbo. Throwing in Axel. Turbo. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. That was good. What franchise would you like to see turned into a Metroidvania? I asked this without even thinking about my answer. Uh, if it's like a 2D style Metroid, um, I could probably do like Gears of War. I think like the Ooh. locations and some of the enemy varieties would work out good for like the different situations. If it's like a, a 3D Metroid, um. Give me something from the Mario universe. Like I know, like Nintendo might frown frown upon that, but they like they made Mario rabbits work, so maybe they can still make that work. Hmm. Well, ice climbers, Vania. Ice climbers, Vania. Just you know, hike through an iceberg and uh, you know, fight icicles. <laughs> How about I think... Batman? Ooh. Well, they. Uh, I mean, are, 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 Arkham. Is like is like a uh, Zelda ish. You could argue Metroid style, but I mean, you just make it a side scroller, and there you go. Did they have that on like DS, like like 3DS? What? They like Blackgate or whatever. What was it like that? I don't know. I, I wouldn't have I played that. <laughs> I wouldn't have played a portable Batman game. I, I believe they've done that on the 3DS. Interesting. Um, I'll t I'll take a look. You have to give yourself an urn if you're wrong. I won't. No, you have to. Anyway, that's my answer. Um. I say they should do a 2D Pikmin. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Boy, do I have the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, um, I have a couple answers that could go with this, but I think the one that would be more, most interesting to me is if they did like a Pokemon, like a 2D Pokemon Metroidvania game, and you had to collect different Pokemons to progress through different areas. Um, and if you don't like that, I'm just going to say Wolfenstein, because I like to shoot Nazis. Spencer's. Do you use the Pokemon to attack? 
like yeah i was like thinking like setting yeah i was thinking like instead of getting like power-ups you collect pokemon and they oh, okay. allow you it's to like, oh you can use this charizard to get past this ice wall yeah you know <laughs> you can use this uh snorlax to help okay, you go to, go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> that was actually kind of how i would i i stated i wanted the pokemon series to evolve maybe not as a side scroller personally but in a, in a way where you like you can choose your Pokemon to to help you just progress through the world, in, in a more interesting way. So I'm with you on that one. They they kind I of evolved off, a little. Sir. They got the uh, the MOBA now. Trying to get with the times, I guess. Yeah, next we're gonna get a a, a, a hero shooter. With uh, oh boy, Pokemon Blastoise. <laughs> <laughs> Blastoise. <laughs> I unlocked a skin for Blastoise. Wow, he's I paid a little $20 more blue. For it. <laughs> he's a different shade of blue. He's cyan. <laughs> Pay a hundred dollars, you can get all the evolutions. <laughs> okay, wah, wah. yeah. Blackgate is technic is a Metroidvania. So I'll say, uh, Robin. <laughs> oh, you're a <laughs> cheater <laughs> you get i don't know how the teen titan games play on game boy Advance, <laughs> oh no you might be you might be in trouble <laughs> oh no i'll have to figure that out <laughs> now next time on the button mappers every 309 super tea guys not the question master i don't I'm have any tea <laughs> your nearest beverage Mountain Dew. I got water. Nice. It's like tea. But minus the tea. Can you taste the mountain? Yes. It's it's okay. it's usually the stuff the villain falls into at the beginning of the movies. And then they get their powers. <laughs> do, you have, do, you, do you have powers? No, I haven't got anything yet. I've been drinking this whole 12-pack. I'm never going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> Uh, let us know when you get your powers. Um, okay, Terry's got a little miniature paragraph here. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to skip through to the question. Which Castlevania game have you not played that you want to play the most? I, I really liked the DS one that I played, and I think there were multiple, so I would just pick whatever one, DS one I didn't play. Do you know which one you didn't play? Uh, sorry, do you know which one you did play? I think it's Dawn of Sorrow. Okay, so you, you just so you didn't play Order of Ecclesia. Okay. I think it's the, sure. the, no. one of the other ones. Isn't Portrait of Ruin something? Yeah, Portrait of Ruin, I think is. I forget. I would get those mixed up with the Game Boy Advance. Ones. Yeah, I think Ecclesia is on the GBA. Maybe I'm mistaken. But yeah, any of those. They all. I, I enjoyed Dawn of Sorrow. That's the one I played. I enjoyed it. So. Whichever one. Okay. Yeah, I'm I would have with... to steal his answer oh. and go with any of the. Any of the DS games because I didn't play any of them and I heard Donosaurus was good. So I'm gonna be weird and say Lords of Shadow two. Um, I played the first Lords of Shadow and you know it was like a it was like a God of War, Shadow of the Colossus rip off type game. It was it was all right. Um, I was mainly interested in it because Kojima helped with it, um, or at least his team did. But it, you know, it had like a good presentation and stuff, and I liked the story. Um, I didn't follow it up. I didn't play the 3DS game because I heard it sucked, and then I didn't play Lord of Shadow 2 because it looked bizarre. And then that team uh, now makes uh, Metroid games for Nintendo, um, like Dread. So that's why I'm 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 interested in um, going back and playing Lord of Shadow 2 and maybe the 3DS one because just because that team now has moved on to working with Nintendo on Metroid, and I kind of want to give their other games a chance. Yeah, I played the first Lords of Shadow. I I liked it. I didn't play that yeah, was, one either, though. It was it was good. <laughs> it was cool. It was fine. It was fine. There was nothing else to play at the time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> I bought it for like fifteen dollars at a pawn shop, but like yeah, it was all right. <laughs> I never hear steal. much about those games. I think because there's like such a big, uh, you know, they're really not such a big departure, but there's such like a. It's like they wanted to just take Castlevania and like make it God of War or something, yeah. you know. And, and when it doesn't do as good as, as God of War, then it's yeah, like, uh, let's sweep that under the rug. Yeah, it was just like lacking its own identity. I think was with this big problem. It's like mm. you know, like 
try to do your own thing. You know, like, we already have God of War. <laughs> we, you know, mm-hmm. as, that's the same thing that Dante's Inferno did. It was like, we already have God of War. <laughs> we already have one God, angry God killer. We don't need any more of those, please. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, aside from uh, Pachinko, I, you guys know I'm a big fan of the... Uh... <laughs> that's a Konami joke. <laughs> Fuck Konami. <laughs> <laughs> Those fuckers. We said it was going to be fucked over, didn't we? Uh, uh, I do. You guys know I'm a fan of the 64 game, uh, but I've never tried Legacy of Darkness, which is supposedly a better version of the 64 game. It has uh, four selectable characters, uh, exclusive levels to some of those characters, um, somewhat enhanced visuals, and um, I, even like kind of the text screens look nice. So I, I want to give it a try. It's been expensive, but there's repro cards out there. So... Uh, be one of these days. That's the one I would like to give a try. Uh, same here. I I've never played it, and I actually kind of forgot it existed. Has anybody here watched the Netflix series? Yeah. Uh, I watched the first season. Oh, it's so fucking good. Yeah, it's the the Castlevania. One? Yeah. I I watched the first season. I remember liking it, and then I tried to watch it again, and I was bored out of my mind. Oh. So I couldn't get through. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know what happened. I heard the second season starts off pretty slow. Like was, the first episode's like a banger, and then kind of takes a lull for a little while. Even though we're not getting Castlevania games, I'm just happy like that exists. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's like that's that's the right step. We'll get yeah. something. Cool. Thanks, Terry. Love you, uh, Tommy. Love you, Terry. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were pr- professing your love for Terry for a second. <laughs> nice. We can all take a moment and, and do so. I love you, Terry. <laughs> love you, Terry. <laughs> that was said by Terry, who's our guest this episode. Whoa. I'm a Steam guy too, Terry. It's okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> right. Speaking of love, uh, we got another love here. Bio Phoenix. What love? Whoop. The love for Bio Phoenix. Bio. I don't know what his voice sounds like. Well, guys, this is Bio, Bio Phoenix, Phoenix here. And, uh, <laughs> love, <laughs> love you, Bio. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's good. That's that's pretty Canadian. Um, <laughs> Q, what character would you want an exact outfit replica? Alex, I feel like starting with you for this one. Oh, why you gotta start with me? Because Spencer <laughs> bought me a No More Heroes jacket. <laughs> I thought that was Jill from Resident Evil. <laughs> Is it not? <laughs> Jill. Disappoint us. It's Claire. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I am. I am actually curious and. Uh, you know, I I putting the rest of the uh, Travis touchdown ensemble together isn't going to be that hard because he wears like aviators and t-shirt and jeans and stuff. The hard part is going to be recreating the beam katana because it looks like a lightsaber, but different enough that like if I want one, I'm going to have to just make my own version of it. So, thank you, J- Spencer, for the jacket. <laughs> Mm. You guys got one? Probably like, like is he saying replica? Like, like if you pick something, does the equipment work properly? Like work like it does in the video game? I would presume so. I think it's more so as like a cosplay thing. But if you want to, oh, okay. you know, go the extra mile, well, you can. When I well, when I think replica, I always think of like something that you like put up on your wall. Like, I'm going to get a bat suit and put it in a glass case or something like that. But uh, probably Sifroth or Solid Snake or any of the ninjas from Mortal Kombat would be pretty cool. This is crazy. I have no idea what I would pick <laughs> for that. You don't want to be Ness? Like, the short shorts? I have, Ness's, the... I have Ness's costume. I, went, I cosplayed as him. Princess Peach. Yeah. Three go. Yeah. Toad. Toad would be oh, fucking cool, but it also is very easy, I would assume. But that'd be hilarious, though, because you would just have the little hat on, and yeah. then you would just you'd be naked except for like a little nappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a little, yeah, a mushroom <laughs> diaper or something. Yeah, like <laughs> and a vest. A yeah. sweet vest. Yeah, I'll do Toad. Oh yeah, he does wear a vest, doesn't he? <laughs> just the vest. You see your like chest hairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, Toad. What's up? <laughs> um. I don't know if I could do a replica. I mean, I, I really do like the Demi Fiend's tats and SMT3 Nocturne, so that'd be cool. But just for sake of simplicity, I'd probably go Groose. You know, like, hair up and like the little ice cream peewee. 
Uh, <laughs> who is this? Uh, Groose. Groose. Groose from, from what? Uh, Skyward Sword. Yeah, Zelda. Oh, okay. He's, kind of he's like the, the best. He's character. the best part of that game. Okay. Everybody loves Groose. Um, <laughs> nobody <laughs> loves Groose. Uh, and then maybe as a follow up, I think uh, uh, Tornico would be pretty cool from Dragon Quest Four. Mm -hmm. I know that one. Or Dragon Ball from Dragon Ball, Frieza from Dragon Ball. Make a Lord sick Beerus. Frieza. Yeah, Lord Beerus from Dragon Ball. <laughs> and Toad from Dragon Ball. <laughs> All right, SNES Mapper, aka um, Sneeze Mopper. <laughs> the one. I put up <laughs> sneezes. Two. What non-Metroidvania game franchise will you pick to have one spin-off? Metroidvania game. Why are you copying me? Can you can you read that again? What non Metroidvania game franchise will you pick to have one spin off Metroidvania game? It's kind well, of a similar question, yeah. but I think it's yeah, make it a spin off. I'm gonna go Same Gears thing. of War again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go Heathcliff. <laughs> <laughs> Fast and Furrier. <laughs> was that the name of the Heathcliff game? <laughs> First one. Not. Um, I guess I'll pick Zelda. It'd be kind of interesting to see what they do with that. Same tools, same equipment, and everything. Just translate it to a Metroid. Zelda Two, cool. gotcha. Zelda Two is a home shot. No. <laughs> oh, hold. Does it have the hammer? Yeah, yeah, it has a hammer. Does it have the boomerang? Stop asking me about Zelda 2 items. Does it have bombs? Does it have a green hat? I have toad. A gr green hat is an item in the Minish Cap. So <laughs> that is a hey! <laughs> You're a rock. Screw it. I'm going Balan Wonderworld. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you know, that was I, really dude, good. I, oh my god. I have completed No More Heroes 3. So I went back to Balan. And I played a world, which was agony. And then I can't figure out how to how to progress now. Um, apparently, I I, and I I looked it up, and apparently I have to go back and collect Balan statues. But nothing in the game told me I need those to open new worlds. So I just literally thought I finished World Three, and I literally just thought that was it. I was like, "Is there no more game past this?" <laughs> I just stuck. <laughs> Do you want endless tutorials to hold your hand, Alex, through these games? I want them to be like, look at this World 4. You need 15 balance Alex, statues to Alex get here. Alex complains. He plays a Zelda game. He says, they tell me everything. They, they I'm on a fucking platformer. I want to know how to get to the next level. The balance, I found the cave with Balan, rock. Balan Wonder, Wonder World, Wonderland dares to challenge you by not holding your hand and listen to him. Modern gamer. Dares to exist. <laughs> <laughs> they probably just forgot to hold your hand when they were making that game. Yeah. <laughs> Yuji Naka was like, just simplify it. Simplify it. Uh, <laughs> simplify it. Like, yeah, removed. I made knights. They'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one comes from a famous person. Axel. Woo. I heard that guy's a dick. All right. We'll have to ask Terry. If this was Kingdom Hearts, uh, Axel would be my nobody. Oh. You guys excited for Metroid Dread? Know, that's not how it works, but I'm excited. Absolutely. It's so funny that that month I'm excited for Metroid Dread, Mario Party, and Monkey Ball. <laughs> One of these things is not Perfect, like that the vacation. other. <laughs> Going to well, say no. Oh. Played, uh, I hundred percented Samus Returns on 3DS, and I found it too handholdy. And I'm worried that do, do, do I have the very similar? Do I have the game for you, Battle and Wonder World? <laughs> they don't nice. you did. Don't Dude, you if they made a they won't even tell you the, they won't even tell you the plot. <laughs> Imagine. I'm disappointed. I I like the 3DS one, Samus Returns. I liked it a lot. I, like what I, I think what it I added like a it. cinematic nature to Metroid. That, I mean, it already had cinematic nature, but I think it, it complemented it really well. I could see what you mean by hand-holdy, though. Like, it, there's a lot I less, like... I think it like, did well, and 
I think there are things that separated it from kind of like that classic exploration from Metroid. When you program everything on the map to scan the entire map and just tell you where everything is as like a core item and feature in the game, that takes away some of the joy and that, you know, really hunt for looking for like little parts of each area that you're in and really internalizing it. Now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the map as my primary thing for exploration which i mean i do consult the map in in 2d adventure exploration games that's fine but when you simplify it to that extent that's a problem but didn't, didn't the other Super thing Metroid with sam's that? returns is that um well the difference with that one was it was like it was the scanner and i don't even like the scanner um but i don't think that the scanner was as used as the one in the the 3ds one yeah it was definitely a bigger part of 3ds for sure the other thing about Samus Returns was that I didn't like that combat feature where it was like swipe the missile back. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I remember it. You didn't like it? it was, I mean, I did. I guess I liked the real time nature of it, but I don't think the execution was like. I don't know. I thought it was weird. I just started playing this game this year because I, I put it off for the longest time. It came out to what 2018 or whatever and i was not playing handheld games at that point um but uh i will say i will take this over no metroid at all so yeah sure absolutely i'm not gonna complain about that shit but if if, if they're not gonna make it let the other team make it yeah i'm not not happy for people who are excited absolutely no that's that's awesome um me personally just from what i see and the comparisons i'm making i'm not as hype about it as i think um a lot of people are I'm definitely not as hype as Alex is. Cause, cause I, don't, I love it. I, I love don't like play Metroid games very much, but I think we're all probably going to play it for the most part. So I'm You know gonna... what I would be hyped for is like if you just said Prime 4 coming out tomorrow, I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's go. I'm going to the GameStop, baby. Yeah, you know, but Dread, that's like cool. Yeah. I want to see it. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm excited, but like like you guys might throw up, but I've, not, I've never actually finished a Metroid game. I've played like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, threw I played up. like uh, I played <laughs> one, two, and like Super and Prime one and two, but I, for, whatever, for whatever reason, I never did finish them. And like over the years, I feel like I've come to appreciate these style of games more. So I'm actually excited to actually play this one. Plus, Have I'm ever... getting the Switch OLED, so I kind of need something to fucking play on it. Have you ever beat a Turok game? I uh, beat the first one. Good. Close enough. I have a couple of them. I beat the 360 one. There you go. That counts, right? Oh, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alex, I'm going to ask the big question. How does that tie into Metroid? The team from Turok moved to Prime. Oh, did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of Prime elements in their, in their early Turok games. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. Metroid is actually a Turok clone. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Metroid Prime. Turok was Turok. a comic book in the Turok Roid. <laughs> <laughs> But no, yeah, a lot of the team from Iguana went on to Retro. Um, oh, that's good to know. So yeah, so if you play like the N sixty four games, you can kind of see a bit of the Prime identity. It's it's not as polished as Prime, obviously, because it's a fucking you know first party Nintendo game, but it's close. It's cool. Nice. Primal Rage, Metroid game. Yeah, Primal Rage. That's it. Got Prime in the title. Okay, Fart and Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that last one comes from a Jabra T. Describe your perfect Majora. axe throwing technique. What? Describe your perfect axe throwing technique. I think it's an ass throwing. <laughs> just, I usually do Jabra under the leg. I usually I like to bend over and hike it like a football. Okay. I've I've never thrown an axe before, so I can't tell you that. If you could, what would it be like? What would your first throw be like? It would be overhead, and you okay. flick your wrist. What what I guess you would do? I'd be too scared of it swinging back and cutting my hand. Mm. But I'm sure that you, doesn't happen. But I'm sure that's what I'd be afraid of. We'll get hurt doing axe throwing. Oh, do that? Are you going to one of those like axe throwing things where you like pay money and they let you throw axes or something? That's what they are. I wanted to do one of those while we're on vacation. There was one there. It's like a lumberjack thing. I think you throw it and then you go, boy, boy, <laughs> boy. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to talk about PlayStation right now. I would give no shits. <laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> um, 
out here in Kentucky, I have to uh, throw tomahawks to catch my prey for dinner. <laughs> Drag it all the way back to the cabin. Yeah. What's your tomahawk throwing technique? Um, I grab the tomahawk by the handle, and then I throw it. And then yeah. you go, Ay! 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 <laughs> <laughs> And I catch the squirrel I was going for. You put your ear to the ground. We're eating tonight. <laughs> Next turn I go, look, Ma, I got one. <laughs> Uh, if I was doing axe throw, I'd probably like kind of charge up and pivot my body as I go. Maybe get like kind of like a, you know, in a fighting stance or something. How big is the axe? Um, big as uh, a forearm. So are you throwing? Be. Are you throwing a spear or an axe or? Uh, axe. Yeah, it's <laughs> axe throwing. Uh, <laughs> it's probably as big as Sephiroth's sword. How about that? It's like super long and it's like, like um guy from Soul Calibur. Uh, I can think of his name. A Astroth. Yeah, he's it's got really a like, huge axe. Like a halberd, right? Something that that's mm. that's that long, isn't it? And still an axe. Biggest Kirby's halberd. Kur yeah, Kirby <laughs> has that. Yeah, that's Kirby's halberd with his face on the front. <laughs> <laughs> the Curry's face on the front just flying at you. <laughs> Kirby's that famous ship, axe. the Halberd. <laughs> yeah, that's my axe throwing technique. And that'll do it for questions for Q&A. If you have a question, put them in the comments. We'll answer them. And remember, our, our, subject, <laughs> our, our, our theme for next month is no theme. Remember. Remember. It's actually DK <laughs> DK month <laughs> three. It's DK December. Next DK month is December? not December. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Maybe I'm ready for it. Um, okay. All right. So we come to game talk. We come to game talk, not just to we answer come questions. To game talk. Also to talk games, all thing games, and we like to start with the guests and talk about their games as well. Axel, what game did you bring for this month's game talk? Well, I decided to pick a little game called The Mummy uh, Demastered. It's a 2D game from Way Forward. Uh, you play this award-winning actor named Brandon Fraser, and you're trying to take down the Scorpion King, played by The Rock. That's not what it is. I was convinced. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Brandon Frazier. Wow, they, they, they Frazier. licensed out the actor. <laughs> no, actually, he plays Tom Cruise. Um, no, this game came out like three years ago, I think. It's like loosely based on the movie, but I never actually watched the movie. The movie with, uh, with Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah, it came out around the same time as that. Whoa! They made a movie. <laughs> they made a game based on that movie. That's fascinating. Yes. My way forward. It's wow. like a Metroid style game, and like, <laughs> um, you play as like a soldier from like a monster hunting organization, and you're like sent in to find out what happened to your team, and of course that never turns out good. And basically, it's basically a clone. It's it's a clone of Metroid. But um, I I started playing this game when it came out, and I got like five hours into it, and then like. This glitch, because in the game when you die, you all your your health upgrades and your items uh, come back as a zombie on a zombie form or yourself, and you have to go back to that person and then kill them to get your stuff back. But when I was playing this game originally, like it'll tell you where they're at on the map. It'll have like a little skull telling you where to find them. I went there to find them, and then they weren't there. Like there was like some kind of glitch. They weren't there. I tried going everywhere around there. I tried throwing like grenades on the floor, trying to just trying to get them to pop up or whatever but i like quit playing it then so like when when you guys said you guys are doing it this time i was like okay that'll give me a reason to go back and play it so it's a pretty decent game what compelled you to to pick it up uh, especially since you're not like being into the movie uh originally uh i think i was just kind of looking for something to play and i was like oh this came out and i saw like the i watched like a trailer of it and i was like oh that looks pretty good so ended up picking it up then 
Have you played other way forward games? Um, I played because they did Contra Four, I think. Yeah. I know they did a couple of the wrestling games on like the Game Boy Advance and stuff, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I have played some more of their games. Oh, they're doing uh, Advanced Wars one and two. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Sick. Yeah, I like. Wii. I'm a fan of Way Forward. So, what do you think of that style of? That it's kind of a thing that I don't want to say Dark Souls started it, but maybe they did. I don't. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. But of trying to change how we perceive the game over screen, and like if if they're like change how we we view like death. Do you think it handles that well? And what's your thoughts on that? And- um, so like at first that I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then like later on in the game, like you can't, you can't really fight the enemies later. Cause like they'll hit you a couple times and you die. So you're trying to make it back to, you know, to get your stuff back. Cause you can't progress without that crap. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you keep dying trying to get, to get the stuff back. Mm-hmm. So that right there definitely becomes a pain in the ass. I'm getting like World of Warcraft flashbacks here. What? Like die in World of Warcraft, and you have to like go to your body and like recover yeah, it. Crap. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've only ever seen it in, like Dark Souls or I guess like Shovel Knight does that too. They're they're, they're definitely the ones that branded it. They're like, okay, this is us. You're gonna call it us when you think of it. Is this yeah. the Dark Souls line? of Metroidvania? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Souls of Metroidvania, but like the levels are pretty cool, and like they got like the forest and like London and like subway. Um, I actually haven't finished it yet. I'm um past where I was, but I'm like in the clock tower area, so mm-hmm. I s- should have a couple more hours, and I'll I'll finish it. Did you say that there are levels? Like it's, it's well, just yeah, like lo- locations on the map. Oh, but they're basically. all tied together, like in, in one big yeah. map. That's yeah, fascinating. You- the map, the maps, it it does what it needs to do. It's not fancy at all. It reminds me of um, Bloodstains map a lot. It kind of has like that Metroid look to it too, with the, the square. Yeah. Um, so I was saying it's like straight up. They knew what they were going for, and they're like, okay, we can't get Tom Cruise, but we're gonna we're gonna get something <laughs> here. Hmm. But this is like an original game, though, right? Yeah. Like so. The title Demastered. Is yeah, I really... have no idea why they picked. <laughs> yeah, because like name. when I think of a Demaster, I think of like um what like Retro City Rampage Man. started out, like like out as like that was like a Demaster of GTA Three, mm. you know beforehand. Um, so I was thinking of like that. So like I always saw this game and I thought like it was like based on a previous Mummy game, which I don't know anything about the Mummy. So I was like, oh, neat. Nice, Plus, it's but... a Demaster of the movie. Yeah, it's but, not. But, but you're not the main. Yeah, I think you're the, yeah, they were like, the character of the movie. I think they were like, well, PlayStation likes these definitive editions, so we're going to do a D Master. Hey. Mm. Time to be clever. Yeah, maybe they were doing that because, like, everyone, not everyone, I shouldn't say these blanket terms like that, but so, much, so many people are into, like, the retro look or the retro style of game that they're just like, let's tackle that because we're not going to make a AAA game out of this. Yeah. So they're like, well, Probably. if we call it D Master, people will be like, I know what. That, that's sort of an inside joke. As, Plus, as I, I feel like a lot of people grew up like on Metroid or like in those roles now to do you know games and and things like that, and they're probably like, oh well, you know what? Let's just do what we know, what we grew up on. So hmm. it's better than the fucking Dark Siders games lately. They've been like war mastered and death and end of edition i fucking hate it um so what what are some of the items like the cool items you can get this game Did, to have uh you get it's 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 pretty basic you get like a like a heavy machine gun you get like an electric gun um i like the uh the spear gun because it kills them in like one hit usually um but it's hard as hell to fucking hit anybody with it <clears throat> And then, of course, you get like you get the regular grenade and like the fire grenade and things like that. They they definitely didn't go out to uh, to push the needle at all. But did you finish this time? No, I haven't finished it yet. I'm I'm past where I was though, and I think this game's only like six hours long or something like that. So, like I said, I feel, think I'm towards the end of it. Feel compelled to to try and finish? Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely have it finished. Your first Metroid game. My first one. Pop that cherry. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I played a bunch of them, but I've never finished any of them. Well, I finished mm. Bloodstained. Does that count? Yeah. Uh, or is that more uh, Castlevania? Uh, yeah. We'll call it a Metroidvania. All right. A Mummyvania. Yeah, <laughs> Mummyvania. there we go. A Demastervania. <laughs> Demastered. <laughs> we'll just call it Mastered. Guys, are you excited to know that WayForward also published Shrek, Ogres, and Dronkies on the Nintendo DS? They published a lot of garbage back in the <laughs> handheld days. <laughs> they, did, uh, they did the Adventure Time stuff too, right? Yeah. yeah, well, this that, is, hey, the, here's it. the thing is that they would do licensed games, and then they would take a lot of that money and put it towards their original games, which is actually a smart business model. I put a link in the chat if you guys are interested. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, okay. you really figured I'm gonna it buy out. that game. <laughs> I thought we were trying to. I thought we were trying to avoid uh, those references this episode. Donkey. We had a big <laughs> no. Oh, oh. It's actually a drunk He said it. It's a drunk donkey. I told I, t I was taking my daughter to school and there was a this um, a monster of a woman there and I was like you know what she can be your friend she can be your Shrek and you can be her donkey. Donkey. <laughs> Inspirational yeah, message before school. Yes. My Make dad friends. called me a donkey. <laughs> My dad called you Shrek. <laughs> My dad called you Shrek. <laughs> they all have yeah. layers. Better hope she's not your teacher. <laughs> There's a nice woman in there somewhere. <laughs> okay. But, oh. I mean, this this game is doesn't cost that much. It was like $20 when it came out, and you could probably get it really cheap on sale. So, I mean, if you guys got like six hours to blow or something like that, it's, it's worth picking up. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the gameplay looks like. It looks fun. Yeah, I'll send you some gameplay. Or you can pick up River City Girls. Also by way forward. Yeah. They did River City Ransom? Girls. Oh, it's just girls. Girls. Yeah. Girls. Girls. the girls are back. Yeah, the girls are back. Girls are back. Oh, I play Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses. That's my favorite way forward game. So that's a that's a pop, unpopular opinion. But, uh, well, they're maybe wrong. not. Yeah. Agree with you. Um, okay, cool. Thanks for the Mummy Demastered, Just Axel. Yes. You got to go watch the movie though, otherwise you won't know what's going on in the game. You haven't watched the. Okay. I haven't watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was about to say. <laughs> Wait the, a the, second. <laughs> the Tom Cruise movies all, all kind of look the same now. Like, you're guaranteed there's explosions, and he's definitely going to be running in it somewhere in the movie. He's going to run, so he likes running. Yeah, it's not my style of movie. <laughs> don't like running in my movies. I don't like running in my movies. <laughs> slow slow down, more. It reminds me of how out of shape I am. Like, damn it. I, run. I would have died in that. <laughs> yeah, I would have died right there. <laughs> That's why, like Seth Rogen, I'm like, oh, I can relate to this guy. Yeah, this guy doesn't move fast at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, who would like to go next? I can go to break the silence. Go away. <laughs> Alright, my game is Rogue Legacy 2. <laughs> Star Wars, I didn't right? want you, know you play it, I've been scared. Star Wars it, Rogue Legacy? Uh, no. This is Rogue Legacy. It's a roguelike game. and That's not Metroid. Uh, yeah, it is. You play, <laughs> it, it plays a lot like Castlevania, um, except the difference is... Uh, Every time you die in this game, the map changes. So you have to explore a different map. And there's, there's, there's a set number of maps. Like there, it's not like there's an infinite number of possibilities. There's kind of a set number, but um, it will change. And uh, every time you die, you become that person's uh, child. So, oh. so when, you, when you start the game, you'll be like a knight. And then you die, and you take the gold, and you upgrade your character, or you upgrade your legacy, as it were. And so you can get more strength, more damage, more magic, uh, more classes, a billion different... Like, anything you can really think of, you can upgrade. You can add moves to your arsenal, you can get weapons, items, armor. 
etc. Mm-hmm. And it all just happens every time you go into that damn castle <laughs> and then die. And also what your kids end up having are traits. And I have a list of traits here. Um, the game does not take itself seriously at all. It's like incredibly jokey. And the, the traits include things like uh, combative, which is 150% weapon damage and 50% health and magic damage, things like that. Or clumsy, objects break on touch. Gigantism, you are gigantic. Uh, Hyper gonadism, enemies are knocked far away. You can get irritable bowel syndrome. You are a fart factory, <laughs> causing you to occasionally <laughs> fart. You can Farts are funny. <laughs> super IBS. Your class talent is replaced with super fart. <laughs> Looking at an image right here, it says unlock universal health care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the game, Finally. Like the tagline for the game, it, it's on Steam. It's, its description is, Rogue Legacy 2 is what you get if you mash Rogue Legacy and a sequel together. So it's, it just I love its sense of humor. It's really, really funny. You can get to you can become vegan and eating food hurts you. It's just like the game is so clever and just ways that it changes how how you play. Um, I mean if it, it has like elements of bullet hell in it. It's got elements of Castlevania and in combat and it's it's pretty simple. Um, but I like what they did with this in just giving you more of Rogue Legacy because I really, really like Rogue Legacy. So it's just it's it's that game, but a lot more, and I, I think a sequel doesn't necessarily have to change the wheel. Sometimes it can just give you more. That game and a sequel. <laughs> mm-hmm. so how like rogue did you go? Um, I haven't played enough of it yet to give like a, a, a substantial review, but I, I really do. It, I've played enough that I can I understand what it's doing. Um, the thing the, I like that it added. Um, there's like weird challenges throughout the game that that the other one didn't have where you go to like almost a different world and you just have to find a way to make it through all the different challenges that they're offering you and it's a nice change because you can you can theoretically i mean you'll most likely die the whole point of the game is to die which i appreciate it's like just go like a monster and try to get as much gold as you can and then die and then just try to pass it on to your kids um and i just i really like that cycle when you die, is it like ran- your abilities and stuff are randomized as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything. Your, your next person could be completely different. You get a choice of three, and the, your, the class depends on what you've unlocked for classes. Um, but their traits will be randomized, so you don't really know what you're getting when you, when you come back. The, your next, and, and also the, the map will be different. There is a way to keep the map consistent, but if you do that, you're kind of a loser. So... You might as well just ev- have everything be random. But I'm already a loser. I was kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so how does this compare to other roguelikes um, that you've played? Like, because I I I enjoy roguelikes, um, but I could find sometimes like the repetition to be a little too much. Like, uh, I'm a big fan of Binding of Isaac, but. I can only play that game a couple rounds at a time before everything just looks the same and, you know, feels kind of the same. So, yeah, I would say it falls into that trap. Um, It's really good for burst playing, which is why I really liked that Rogue Legacy was on the PS Vita. It was really, really easy to play through it that way. I wish this one was portable, and I'm sure it will be, but right now it's technically still in green light on Steam, which is their beta, like, testing format mm-hmm. which it's been there forever that's like a whole nother conversation is they really need to change how they work with that because they and i'm sure axel knows this because he said he's a steam guy too but they they let games just sit there and pretend yeah. to not really be out it'll, be out and it'll be there money. for five years and it's still in beta somehow <laughs> yeah uh, i mean the game is fine it's not like it's breaking any laws or anything but it's it's just um i wish they would release it on other consoles like the switch it would be amazing on the switch um, yeah i'd probably check it out on there so that's right. I noticed kind of like a, I don't know if I'd call it a shift in your taste in games, but it seems like a lot of the, your most recent games have been kind of like indie-esque. Um, can you say a little bit about that? Um, well, as a PC gamer, you tend to, you get hit with a lot of those. Like Steam is full of indie games. And I don't know. I just, I, I've always played indie games. I don't, I've never not 
like avoid or never avoided them. Um, I don't know, maybe just recently, because a lot of the games I play are RPGs, and I don't really have time to do that for game talk. <laughs> so maybe wow. that's why. But um, yeah, I've I've always played indie games. What I mean, I can test it. I think indie games are doing some more of the interesting stuff anyway. I mean, what are they gonna play? Fucking Call of Duty Vanguard or whatever the hell's coming out. Like, I don't give oh, a yeah. shit. Call of like, Duty, baby. I've been playing, and that's dude. Game Pass is the best for indie games because they put them out like, constantly. Like, I, like I've been playing, um, was it uh, Boyfriend Dungeon, which is a dungeon crawling dating sim. Like, that's a weird idea, but y- yeah, I want to see what that's all about. You know, what so. is the goal of that game, by the way? I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Boyfriend Dungeon today, <laughs> <laughs> but you date your weapons. Uh, there's not is there's girlfriends too. The the name's misleading, but um, oh, you could call it Friend Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buddy dungeon, um, <laughs> friend zone dungeon. Um, or, I mean, honestly, in that game, you can go through and not date anybody. It's fun, um, but yeah, it's just like indie games are doing the more the interesting stuff. So I understand like the des- the desire also to go towards more indie games because like what am I going to do? Play Sonic Colors Ultimate where they fucked up a port of a goddamn Wii game? Okay, that's all I have to say on that. Forty dollars. Now you too can experience the beauty that is Sonic Colors. Three color. <laughs> Red, blue, and yellow. Uh, I like indie games now too. I My, my mind's kind of changing on them. I used to be very like biased against them. Maybe because I was playing them on my 3DS and like 3DS access to indie games is a lot less, like even on Switch. And so as I played more, like you'll see with today's that like, uh, just I'm going back to back bangers, man, like with these indie games. And like, I'm like, there is some good stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus agree. you can buy like three indie games for the price of a brand new game. So, oh yeah, I usually myself have... like two bucks all the time. <laughs> I was yeah, trying to think of uh, a game that I was that ha- I w- I was playing before that that the map resets and all that stuff, and I was thinking of Dead Cells. Mm-hmm. I didn't play Dead Cells. Yeah, Dead Cells is pretty too. good. Yeah, it's a good one too. Do you guys feel paying like two dollars for an indie game? I feel like I I screwed somebody over. Yeah. Well, did I you heavy? <laughs> did you hear there's uh, there's some controversy because of of Steam's refund policy oh. that spe- specifically affects indie gamers more so. No, I remember this. Steam has they 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 actually have a return policy, which I applaud them for. They've had it for a long time too, which is you can return a game with if you haven't played it within two weeks or two hours of gameplay so those are your two as long as those two are met that you're under two hours of gameplay and within two weeks of owning the game problem is some indie games are not two hours long Mm -hmm. so one person one one company i can't remember it was like a one guy thing i think so it's not like the biggest example but it is kind of shitty is they release their game and it's under two hours and so everybody played it and then just returned it. Yeah, so you, you could beat like Donut County in like forty minutes. It's, short it's hike, not... technically too, but I keep short hike because it's it's a cool game. Um, but I definitely see that as like a problem. I've returned a game on Steam, but for a different reason because it was like broken with like, on my. On, it was like one of those shooters, and like there's just massive slowdown. I guess the reason I asked the question is because. Um, no, I, I've tried to do a little research into this, and it's very hard to get definitive answers about how much money does a game developer make off of a game if you buy it, like digital or physical. On the Steam storefront, if you buy a game, Steam takes out about a 30% cut versus if you yeah. buy it on console, it's about 40%. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm getting a game for like, like let's just say $5, right? You know, and, and the guy makes like 250 off it, you know, I have to like kind of think to myself like, and especially because it's not like a corporation. I'm getting this from like maybe a few man team or something. Mm-hmm. But is this? Am I comfortable only giving a couple bucks for this guy? You know, do I feel comfortable paying the tax, the Steam tax or the console tax, like, and knowing that this person's getting ripped off? If I get the physical game, you know, and and so I I've, I've kind of like tried to wrestle myself with like, knowing that this is somebody's art and their work, especially knowing if it's a good game or not, like. How, how comfortable am I to spend only, like, a little bit? Can I be like, um, can I leave them a tip as well, please? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's a question of supply and demand and, and economics. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I also assume that they put those games on sale. 
Yeah. Like they're the ones that put that on sale. So, I mean, I don't, if somebody says I'll sell you this apple for five cents and I really wanted an apple, I would take it. And then yeah, it would be, it'd be, I, I wouldn't really think about the them then going in the back and crying because <laughs> they have a nickel. Why would I do that? <laughs> you sold it to me. So I, I would see, think I, that they would I remember reading it. like an, an article like a, a while back about um, a developer that was talking about that same thing. And they were talking about how if they put it on sale, even if it's cheap, it gets the player into the door and more people are playing the game. And then possibly if they make another one, that player might buy the game instead of waiting for it to be on sale. Mm. Do you know who doesn't do digital refunds? PlayStation. Nintendo. But they did recently with Sonic Colors Ultimate. That's how fucking bad it was, guys. Okay. <laughs> Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's those little, little exceptions like that. Cyberpunk was a shit show. I'll play it. That was the best Metroidvania game. <laughs> Cyberpunk. <laughs> Metroid. I'll talk about Cyberpunk. No, I'm not. Uh, Spencer, anything else for Rogue Legacy? Two. Three? It's, a, it's a super duper good, good time. Are you How saying it's it? a super Metroid game? Super duper Metroid game. Vania. Vania. Put I put that on the review. Super duper Metroid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Alex, <laughs> it's on you. Okay, I'm talking about Sonic Colors Ultimate. I'm just kidding. Um, today, I am talking about a game, um, much like my buddy Axel over here. I haven't technically finished. I've been playing it for like a year, though. Uh, I just want to make that clear, and I'm still playing it. And it's a game that um, when I, I, I originally played it um, when I first got an Xbox One and Game Pass. And then when I actually bought my Xbox Series S, it's the first game I bought for the console, because I bought the Ultimate Edition, which is optimized for next gen. It looks really great. Um, it's a game by a company, a studio, reader rather, that I am very familiar with, and I was excited to, to get to play it. And that game is Control, um, a game by Remedy. Remedy also made Max Payne. Uh, they made Alan Wake, which I love Alan Wake. And they also made Quantum Break, which was a game. Um, and Control is basically what I think a... 3D Metroid game could be. It's um, the basis of the game is you play as a woman. Uh, her name is Jessie. She uh, has entered a giant government, a secret government facility called the Bureau of Control, hence the name. And um, you are looking for your lost brother. From there, I won't tell you much more beyond you, you know for the story because part of the draw of the game is how cinematic it get it uh, uh you know the game is not in the sense of like Metal Gear Solid like watching four hours of cutscene but cinematic in the sense that like everything you do and everything you see kind of leaves like a lasting impression the things you interact with in the game even in real time have this like cinematic feel so playing through the story is actually pretty important when it comes to this game uh, but there there uh, I will say that there's this evil um beings called the 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 hiss these these otherworldly beings are uh, invading the uh, this giant uh, government facility um so your job is to take out the hiss uh much more beyond that but like i said that's all i'm gonna say um the game is very open-ended you search through different areas of the bureau of control so you go through like the testing facilities the prisons uh you know things like that and uh, you get new powers, new upgrades. You have powers like you can use like a, you know, almost like a force throw, like in Star Wars. Uh, and you can throw anything around you at, at the enemies. Uh, you have guns. Your gun transforms into different types of, uh, and you know, things and different types of guns and stuff. Uh, you have uh, an ability that like lets you float through the air for a short amount of time. Um, and you, uh, you know, like uh, continue getting these upgrades. And each one kind of opens up the game a little more and opens up the areas. Um, I know personally playing through some of the areas, I've seen parts of the map that I can't get to yet, but I really want to because it looks so interesting. Um, and speaking of interesting, the visuals in the game are very interesting. Every location, you think being set in a government facility would be kind of boring because it's like, looks like office buildings. But they do so much with the game's art style and geometry that they like whenever an area is being controlled by the hiss it looks distorted Bl these blocks and stuff are like coming out of the walls and when you clear up the area it all shifts back to normal in real time and it looks crazy cool uh, this game runs like 
gr- fucking great on the Xbox Series S. Um, it's probably the best game, the best looking game I have on that console uh, that's been optimized. Um, and I'm just very impressed by the by the game. Um, if you guys have any questions about control, link to our question. How does it control? Oh, great! It's a it, it's 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 a remedy game, and you know they made the original two Max Payne games, so you yeah, use um, a controller. Yes, <laughs> yeah, use a controller. Did you play uh, Quantum Break? Yeah, I did play Quantum Break. That's why I made fun of it earlier. Do you see a lot of uh, resemblance in like the combat and stuff? The combat, yes. Everything else, control. Quantum Break felt like the Remedy was making what Microsoft wanted them to make. Control feels like Remedy's making what they wanted to make. Um, but combat-wise, yeah, I can see some resemblance. I think Control feels better to play, though. Um, yeah, I so bought Control, but I've never actually started it yet. It's just been sitting on my shelf. Their their gunplay has always been great. You know, I'm a big fan of Max Payne, which is uh, yeah. in, of, sorry, in uh, Alan Wake also, which Alan Wake's getting a remaster um, October 5th, so that's cool. Um, but... So yeah, I I sat on this game for a while. I, I didn't pick it up mainly because like the trailers don't tell you anything, really. They're just like weird abstract imagery of of, of a girl floating, you know. And it's like, yeah. what Plus is it's this? Like, it's like oh, this is a, a Metroid style game, but you can't tell that by the trailers. It's like that uh the last Star Wars game was uh like a Dark Souls style Dark game. Souls, but yeah. From the trailers, you couldn't tell that. So, yeah, so, like, I remember Control winning a bunch of awards and stuff, and I was like, what is this game even about? And then finally, when I got Game Pass, I was like, okay. Like, that was one of the first things that I, I downloaded. I was like, okay, I need to see what what, what Control actually is. And, uh, yeah, I was just, you know, very enthralled. It's it's a game that I've gone back to. Um, over, you know, I've, I've continued to play. It's, um, and why it's taken me so long is because this game does pack a challenge. There is no difficulty setting, which is fine. Uh, the game is very challenging. Um, so you are going to die. This is, this is, this is a hard game, uh, which I'm fine with. I like the challenge, but with it being harder, some areas have taken me a little longer to progress through. That's why it's taken me a little while to get through the, as much of the game as I have now, uh, which I, I feel like I'm a good ways in. Um, but, um, I noticed yeah. that, that you said that it reminds you of what a 3d metroid game would be like but i googled 3d metroid games and there's this game that came up it said metroid prime i okay in the sense prime is like a first person 3d metroid game. i mean in the yeah. sense of like if they made like a if they took super metroid and made that into a 3d game this is this is kind of like how i would imagine it i'm just um is there a also, third person guess, metroid game yeah, and I guess Castlevania. This is what Metroid Other M should have been. Mm. That's uh, there we go. That's how because Metroid Other M. There's there's a lot of comparisons because Metroid Metroid Other M is a third person Metroid game that takes place in a giant facility, and this is a third person shooter <laughs> Metroidvania game that takes place in a giant facility. Mm. But this game is miles better. It's way more cinematic, which is something Metroid Other M was trying to do. It is uh, it, the the story is way more interesting. Um, it's just a fucking great game, and Other M failed at this, and I think this is what Other M could have been. Do you think Remedy should make a Metroid game? I would like them to. I don't think I, I don't think they would want to because of how. I mean, granted, th- this game is on Switch, but it's like a cloud version uh, of how underpowered mm. um, the Switch yeah. console is, and Remedy tends to try to to push the boundaries of of their games. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, Except for Quantum Break, um, so, that game pushed boundaries. It also had really yeah, long cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, that game pushes boundaries, but it's also like half TV show, um, an hour long episode. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's, there might still be a Twitch stream somewhere that you can watch of me falling asleep during a, <laughs> a let's play of that. Dude, oh, you can tell watch, they did not. Yeah, I don't watch TV, and so I was like, I guess I knew it was a t- basically a TV show, but. Yeah. One of the one of the epi- quote unquote episodes was on, and I just like fell asleep. You could tell they didn't want to make a Quantum Break. Um, they wanted to make Alan Wake too, but Microsoft said no. <laughs> Quantum Break, uh, but no Control feels like a remedy game. It feels like I've 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 gone back to the, like the first day I was playing like Max Payne on my uh, Xbox, and I was like, whoa, you know, games can like do this. And you know, does it same have thing a, a bullet time where you slow down time? No, um, I think I believe that is one of the abilities. Yeah, but it's not. 
it doesn't like automatically nine. do that. Yeah, it doesn't automatically do that. Actually, uh, you'll be using the uh, the force throw a lot more, which is really cool because you know again, there's not like certain items in the environment that you are like this is the, like this is meant to be thrown. Everything can be used, and everything is destructible, and it, it, it all feels very cinematic. Whenever you're in a firefight, there, there's no set pieces. What what happens to the environment happens because you're in a firefight, um, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, it it just makes the entire experience feel cinematic rather than like here's the cutscenes that are meant to be the cinematic part. You know, um, it works really well. You mentioned the game did get a lot of awards. I remember it being kind of like a household name. I don't remember which year, 2018, 2019 or so. Uh, 19 yeah. when it came out. It got it game of the year, it. didn't it? So it was nominated for a lot. I know that IGN yeah. gave it like greatest game of the year or something. But uh, in your experience, your brief experience with it, um, how has it lived up to some of those accolades? Um, you know, usually going into a game like that, they seem to not impress me as much, especially when time goes on. You know, because once again, this came out in 2019. I didn't start playing it until 2020, late 2020, be that. And, you know, I'm still playing it now. Um, I, I Honestly, I get it. I wish the trailers just told me more. So I could have understood like why the game was so was so good um, because they do a poor job of marketing this game. It's just they want the intrigue, but like beyond that, they don't ex- like tell you the stuff that really would sell you on the game's combat or the game's locations or you know the game's visual style. Um, like I said, this is the best looking game on my Series S so far, and. Um, it's the, it's, it feels great to play. Uh, I think it's a fantastic game. I think it's really cool that this was nominated for Game of the Year um, and, and it won awards because this is like a new game using almost like an old school, um, you know, style like like Metroid sensibilities. You know, it, it lets the game tell the story in a, in, you know, in, you know, in a sense. And most games nowadays are are fucking afraid to do that. Like the new God of War, where you walk with your son for forty minutes. You know, it's this game doesn't have that. This game puts you in control the entire control the entire hey. time, and you know, it, every once in a while, it, you know, you know, it'll cut to like a brief cutscene, and then it's back to you. It's there's there's no boring walking sections, you know. There's no anything like that. It's not like you know most of the newer games where it's like oh, we're making a movie. <laughs> mm. It's like the, the 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 game itself is allowed to, to tell its story to you. Troll. It puts you in control. Yeah, during like uh, any of the combat, did you have any like slowdown at all? No, it it runs super smooth. I don't know. I'm guessing it runs at sixty on the Series S. Um, yeah, I think it does. If not, if it ever did dip, I never noticed it. It it feels so good to play. Runs like Tom Cruise. Yeah, oh, from a mummy. That's fast. That's Tommy. <laughs> Tommy Cruise. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right, it's ready for Shrek, Ogres yeah. and Drunkies. Yeah, Drunkies. give us the Shrek. Give us the Shrek speech. Shrek speech. Shrek speech. Shrek speech. Shrek speech. Shrek. Well, Shrek. come back next year for all things Shrek Timber. <laughs> We're going today instead to the land of Metroid. Uh, I actually wrestled with a couple games uh, for this game talk. I had a few on the mind. One of them I beat. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to post a review over on Alex's channel, Turbo Zone, uh, for November. Uh, the game I wanted to talk about today actually falls more, more under the Metroid kind of style than it does a Metroidvania. I do find there are a lot of Metroidvanias in the indie market, but not as many Metroid games. And the game I'm very excited to talk about today is Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge is a 2D action adventure style game. Very much set in a sci-fi world with, uh, you know, these kind of like robots and machines, and and it kind of even has like the eight-bit Metroid look to it. You start off, and you know, you're the scientist, and you know, you kind of like just pass out. There's like, you know, it does more than an NES game could. Like you have like, you know, storytelling and everything, um, and you 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 come to fruition in this world, and you're kind of like underpowered, but there's like, you know, uh voice like this techno this robot voice that kind of like guides you to this the axiom weapon and um you know, it's it's really a massive sprawling game and the story unfolds to you as you kind of um 
you know, progress through the story, you, not everything's clear. What are these robots? Why are they like ancient and defunct? And why are they trying to guide you to figure out what's going on? At the time of this recording, I haven't beat the game. I put probably four hours in. Um, but it's it's really you know compelled me. The first time I got this game was on the PS4 um, back in like 2016. It was the first console that it came out on. Uh, but I just found I wasn't crazy about the PS4 controller uh, and playing you know a 2D action adventure platformer. I'm playing it on the Switch right now, so I'm a bit more compelled to do so. It's actually very interesting. It takes advantage of all of the aspects of the controller like both joysticks uh the right joystick for like switching your weapon you know you you the game is very much based around uh technology acquisition and uh using those items to progress through the world through areas that were previously you know locked off to you now some of them are a bit more you know as you might expect in a 2d platformer oh a higher jump oh you know some different weapons but you do get some really cool things there's one thing called like the hack beam where you can kind of like hack the environment and change shapes of like weapons or the environment there's some like really huge sprawling uh, bosses and these like massive screens you know and I, I know like maybe we're kind of con feel confined in like these 8-bit panels sometimes but uh you know the game doesn't shy away from opening up the environment it very much feels like I, like almost i know i said 8-bit but it really does feel kind of super metroid-esque and it's very striking it's beautiful you know when you come into different territories and you see the different environs that aren't all just like you know pitch black and dark there's some really nice sights to behold. One of the things I found really impressive about Axiom Verge was its legacy. This is more or less a one-man project uh, done by Thomas Happ. And uh, it's for developer, publisher, composer. It's Thomas Happ. Thomas Happ Games. He did all of that. And when I was, I actually got turned on to buying this game at full price. I had mentioned that earlier about indie games. Um, and just kind of like, you know, what am I willing to spend on them? I was reading a review in Nintendo Force, and the guy said basically that he stayed up night and day working on this game uh, to help a for him and his son. And, you know, just kind of like this idea about like this father working really hard on this passion project that is, is just really like kind of like a masterpiece in terms of, you know, like this, this indie genre and, and kind of replicating that Metroid style. I was really taken aback by that and, and impressed and you know that I didn't read that at the time when I got the PS4 version but you know I have Nintendo Force now and uh, just seeing that kind of inspired me to um, to pick it up give it a try and uh, I'm really loving it I'm, I'm excited to, to finish it and to keep working my way through it and uh, eventually try out the sequel which came out this year so that's Axiom Verge did you know that Axiom Verge along with like Shakedown Hawaii were some of the last games to get physical Wii U games <laughs> Yeah, I remember when it came out on the Wii. Actually, there's yeah. a bit of uh, conflict about it being programmed for the Wii. They uh, they thought it couldn't be done at first um, because they had it on <laughs> PS4 in 2015, but then I think it came out on Wii U in 2016. Yeah. And uh, it's nice that it's on Switch because I don't want to boot up my Wii U. <laughs> yeah. But I do yeah. remember the physical release. Go ahead. The, the, this is a game that, obviously, as a Metroid fan, it, it does interest me, and I really should play it because 2 is out. But it's, 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 it's a game that, like, I... I, I want to get, and I've always wanted to get, but I've always wanted to get it, like, when I can just devote time to it and it alone. Like, that's always been kind of, like, my mindset, which is kind of why I, I haven't bought it yet. It's because I've just I've just been waiting until, like, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play Axiom Verge. And now I'm going to have two games to play. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely... Uh, that resonates with me because, you know, I had it on PS4 and I was like, this isn't the right time. I'm not vibing with this, you know, playing on the big screen. But actually playing it in dock or handheld mode on Switch is great, but also switching with the Pro Controller. Like, you, you can't use this with the SNES controller because it only has, like, the A, B, X, Y and the D-pad. And you mm -hmm. need more of the buttons. But it's it's surprisingly smooth. Like, you, like, I would think that, like, if you're using the joystick to control, you know, a, a 2D platformer, action platformer, it can be imprecise. But the game is so smooth. It's it's just really good, and it's really impressive that it's done by a one one man team. Do you, do you use the right joystick to aim where you're where you're where you're firing or something, or do you use it to switch weapons? Yes, to switch weapons. So, okay. um, and this game does have button mapping, a plus for the button <laughs> mappers. Uh, yeah. Um, but us. what you can do is, you know, like with the original 8-bit Metroid, right? You can only fire left or right. 
Super Metroid changed that up a little bit. You could run in a kind of like pivot or angle. You can still angle. You can angle all uh, eight directions with the left joystick. But if you hold the left uh, L1 trigger, you can stay stationary and aim whatever weapon you have. There's a nice assortment of weapons where I am in the game. I currently have five. And they're all kind of different and unique. One's kind of like shotgun-esque. The other one is, but not like a standard shotgun. It's like kind of like a, like this kind of plasma beam shotgun. And so there's a lot, a lot of cool alien wear, I guess you would say, without conflating it with the brand. But, uh, and I, there's a, it's, it's a very smooth experience with the controller. What did, did you play think this on the, alien uh, the alien wear? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the, like the art style? Like I've seen screenshots and stuff. I've never actually played it, but. I think the Arch Star looks uh, a lot different than a lot of the other games that are out. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely, like, very sci-fi-esque. You'll see these kind of, like, decrepit robots that are, like, spurs throughout the game and on the cover of the, the box as well, if you get the physical yeah. version. Um, you know, like, those show up every so often. I guess the way I would think of those as is, like, almost like in Super Metroid or one of those style games, like, you see, like, those statues that are kind of, like, just frozen. You kind of, like, are wondering what is this about what you know like what is this thing and you know these are like actual like coded programs that are are destroyed in this kind of like you know a ancient new modern world and uh they speak to you and they like they they use like this kind of like communication system and there's like interspersed dialogue with you and them uh the actual like platforming segments do look very metroid-esque but the environments are decently varied like uh as you kind of escalate you can get like to outer the outer world and not Outer Worlds, but uh, there's... Hell a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what do you guys think of Outer Worlds? Um, no, uh, the the uh, environments are very lush, and I think once you see, like, the 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 above-terrain areas, um, you'll see, like, some really beautiful pixel art. Like, I can think of, like, this one segment with, like, snow in the foreground, like a, a luscious pink uh, horizon in the background... And, uh, you know, a decent array of enemies, too. And also your weapons and stuff. The sound effects are very smooth and cool. So, yeah, I, I, I do find it impressive. It's got the first two letters of your name, which is Axel. Yeah, you can't go like wrong there. Axelium Verge. Axelium Verge. Do you, do you think that this pushes Metroidvanias? And I hate that term, but could you, does it um, push that concept forward? Or does it stay um, rooted in the past? Okay, I don't want to get too caught up in semantics here, but I'm happy to entertain the discussion about, you know, Metroidvanias. This is, I, I you know, I, I'm kind of strict on the idea that this is a Metroid game and not a Metroidvania because there is no RPG system. It's 2D action adventure side scrolling. You know, to me, if you want to talk about like pushing Metroidvanias, a lot of these things, you know, use like the RPG system. In the other game that I played, there's very much this idea of like upgrading your mechanics and your equipment. That's not what this is. This is about like finding the items and uh, being able to use them to enhance your exploration. Um, so, I mean, again, it's a semantic uh, difference. Do I think it furthers uh, the genre and what it's capable of? If you, if you want to look at it in terms of like Metroid style games, then yeah absolutely i do think that it's it's very unique and novel with its concepts and does stay true to the sci-fi genre i find a lot of games kind of shy away from sci-fi um i don't know so i i do appreciate what it has to offer you guys played it no Not alex yet. you said you want to wait for the the right day and time i want to wii you <laughs> Actually, would mind yeah, have that one with you. <laughs> Be kind of cool. That's you ever tried it? Do did this ever come out on like the PlayStation Plus as a free you game? My question. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I have this game. I'm like, but I know uh, I wouldn't have paid for it. So it, it, yeah, I, I thought it was a PlayStation Plus game at one time. I think I have. I wouldn't this. be surprised because I, originally it was on the PlayStation Four. So yeah, I don't. To be, to be honest, it seems very daunting, this game. You know what? I think it's... <laughs> I haven't had to look at a guide once. Um, t I just keep consul consulting with the map, and I think once you understand the style of game about, like, oh, I need the jump to get here. Oh, there's kind of, like, a segment with a smaller tunnel, so pro I probably need an item to get there. You know what you can and can't do. Um, I've had no... Like, I've had to look stuff up for Super Metroid before. 
you know, like with those really hidden blocks in the corners of the wall and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't found this too bad, but it is challenging. I will say that because your guy is like, he's very underpowered. Um, mm. But I think once you get a grasp of your inventory as you keep expanding the items and um, also just kind of like safe uh, distance from enemies, you'll, you'll be fine. So the bosses, they're not challenging in the sense of like, oh, you know, how do I say this? In terms of like being super close to bullets or anything like that, it's more about recognizing their patterns and seeing what it is you need to do and experimenting to see what works right. The game is very fair and balanced. Um, I, there are save points that restore your health all the time. And if you die, you don't lose your progress. Say you killed a boss but then you die in the next panel over because you want to keep adventuring, you'll respawn at the save point and the boss will still be defeated. Or if you got an item, you'll still have the item in your inventory. So I do think that the game gives you the tools that you need, especially if, even if like, let's say you keep pushing forward on the map and you just want like that map log, you still have that. It didn't disappear. Um, so it's kind of woven nicely into the narrative as well. This robot thing won't let you die. So it keeps respawning you. Um, so, Brutal. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting game and one that that makes you curious. And I think that's really important in terms of like, maybe not so much Metroid, but like a sci-fi esque game. Do you Is feel like map? the bosses are like really um, like diverse? Like when I was playing the Mummy, like as soon as you see a boss, you kind of know what their patterns are going to be just by looking at them. So do you feel like the bosses in this game are really diverse and kind of challenging? Yeah, I think that, you know, bosses are, they're not like explicitly multi-phased, but they have interesting phases. So what I mean is like, you know, you want like, yeah, you'll see like the color of the boss shift as they start to like, you know, weaken, but then they might start trying like new maneuvers and like desperate attacks and stuff. So uh, what you see is like certain parts of the bosses are weak. And so like, yeah, you're going to aim for weak points, but like the, once that point disappears, what are you, you going to aim for next? What do you have to, to look for? And um, you do have to, it, the reason that they are diverse and unique from one another is because of how it interlaps with what items you have acquired by that point. Like, let's just say I'm talking about the hacking beam, right? Um, you might not need that early on for an early boss because you don't have it, but say you come up across another one and then there's like these kind of like blocks that are like, uh, you know, in the in the um, panel, in the 2D, like the screen, that like kind of look off and funny. So you fire at them and suddenly you can build kind of like, you know, with like a Mario uh, 2D game, like platforms that are like leading up to it. And so you can get some different angles on the boss. There's some very clever ways that the game plays with uh, what you have and where you're at. Is it mappable? There are distinct portions of each map. I need to look at the names of each territory. Um, just wonder how interesting it is. I mean, I definitely think it's interesting for a map out. I just don't know if the viewers, how many viewers would be into that. So that would be my only concern. But you can let us know in the comments. Would you like to see a map out? Of Shrek, uh, what was that game called? Monkeys and Drunkies. Shrek, enter the Ogres Shrek. And, og Ogres and Drunkies. Ogres I and Drunkies. I vote yes. Shrek? Shrek? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Things Shrek month. Over. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. I don't want to do Shrek. Spencer, you're on footage duty for that one. For Shrek month. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. That was uh, Axiom Verge with Axel. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining. This has been a great game talk, and uh, we will see you another map. Cool. Thank you for joining us today, Axel. No problem. Thank you guys for having me on here. I look forward to listening to y'all's rants every week. So, I'm Alex. Hey, you are. <laughs> he and keeps I'm telling Teddy. us he's Alex. Are you? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's making me think that you're not Alex. I know I'm definitely Alex. I like to do human things. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> like that checks out. A kid. <laughs> what a human would do, right? Yeah.
now Axel knows how these episodes end. <laughs> Loosen fast. Loosen goose. <laughs> Germs and sperms, right? There we Germs go. Germs and sperms. So that this month. Uh, Spencer, can you end us on a good joke? Um, let's see. Think of a good joke. No? <laughs> All right. I, I, I can't even <laughs> tell a joke. Go. I don't know. Um, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Um, what do you call... What do you call a, a guy who uh, survived getting sprayed by mustard gas? Was that? Alex. Alex, that was correct. <laughs> Alex, you good... survived mustard gas? I said a good joke. <laughs> yeah, it's a seasoned veteran. Uh, that was... Or me, apparently. Or Alex, yeah, I'll, yes. I'll like I do Alex like mustard. Okay, what do the ancient Egyptians say... Uh, who do the ancient Egyptians call when... Um, Ghostbusters. You know, when they're sad? Oh. My answer is still Ghostbusters. Alex. Good one, but I was actually Mummy. Mummy, oh. Scorpion King. Oh, mummy. Yeah. Mummy, get it like mummy, <laughs> mummy. Yeah, mummy. Yeah, mummy. Like a, you know, then there's, there's, there's like mummies. Mummy the master. Mummy the master. <laughs> All right, Alex. Like the master, but mummy the master. What? You have to do a joke now. We got one from me and one from Teddy. Oh, I have to do a joke. Mm-hmm. Axel, don't think you're off the hook. Damn it, I didn't think of a joke. Um, I don't it's know, Shrek. man. Yeah. It's it's Shrek. Man. Donkey! There you go. Donkey. You do, like, what's the best key in Shrek Zelda? Donkey. That is such a. That is reaching so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alex. <laughs> Where's the joke, bud? <laughs> We're ready. The joke is me in my life. Oh. I mean, I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Axel, play us out. Play us out, Axel. Uh. <laughs> Why don't women wipe when they pee? <laughs> or why don't women shake when they pee? They Is don't a... have wieners. <laughs> they don't have <laughs> Yeah, what's the answer? Is that it? I don't I don't forgot what it was, honestly. Because <laughs> they it's something about air drying and I'm trying I don't remember what it was. <laughs> something about air drying. <laughs> Oh my god. They they like fart to air dry or something, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> is this is this a fact? Why don't women shake when they pee? I don't know. Leave I it in the comments. I don't know the answer. It's I think it's true. something about air dryers. <laughs> air dryers. <laughs> Dude, Blow dry. I just tell jokes loosely based on like what you heard like 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it in school. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I put I pushed all the math information aside just to keep yeah, this joke and it didn't work. Important stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Calculus. That's, oh, that's yeah. my favorite joke. <laughs> Do you tell yeah. all of your jokes as like a mystery? Like I like the air of mystery at the end of that one. It's like a the punchline. It's like it exists, but it's somewhere in like a nebulous region that you have to like. <laughs> give me, give me well, like a funny. week and I'll remember what it was. <laughs> what would be funny is like if you went into it so confident about the joke. Yeah. It was like, hey guys, wh why don't women shake when they pee? Like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. Something about, <laughs> something about air dryer. an air dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, like knock, 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 guys. Knock, knock. Up. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't think you guys were going to answer. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Open up. <laughs>
Oh my god. That's my favorite <laughs> joke now. <laughs> you mind if I steal that? <laughs> yeah, you can have it. <laughs> I didn't trademark that one. <laughs> Spencer Steele's jokes confirmed. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Thanks for joining. We will see you with more Metroidvania. Going to be Mania. And I'm Alex. Here you are. Hey, y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.